Hi everyone, let's talk about the sigma function. The sigma function takes the sum of the positive divisors of a positive integer. So let's say we have an integer n and its prime factorization is p1 to the e1 times p2 to the e2 all the way through to pk to the ek. And we want to find sigma in terms of this prime factorization, these the data that we have here, the primes and their multiplicities. So we're going to use a lemma. Recall that m divides n and m is positive if and only if a certain condition is true, which is that m is equal to p1 to the f1 times p2 to the f2 all the way through to pk to the fk where each fi satisfies that it's between 0 and ei inclusive. So it can be 0 or ei as well. And this is equivalent to another condition which is that for all prime p nu of nu p of m is less than or equal to nu p of n. And this condition is fairly easy to prove and then you can show that it's the equivalent to the first one that I mentioned. So we're going to be using the first criterion and what we find is that sigma of n is equal to the sum of the positive divisors of n and that can be written in this way where we have each we have um, p1 to the f1, p2 to the f2 all the way through to pk fk and each fi satisfies that it's between 0 and ei so this is for i from 1 through k so this looks like a mess, but you can actually show that this is equivalent to, sorry, it's equal to, it, it factors very nicely. It's 1 plus P1 plus P1 squared all the way through to P1 to the E1. And you keep going this way through the PI until you have 1 plus PK plus pk squared all the way through to pk ek. So we're just running through the the um, p, p to the powers that are less than or equal to the multiplicity of that prime. And you can prove this using the distributive law. It's easier to go from this to this as opposed to from above to below um, because it's easier to expand than to factor. But I, I, even if you do show it going from below to above, um, that means they're both equal, so it's fine. Just use the distributive law. Now, one more thing that I want to mention is that this is a geometric series. So you can actually write this as 1 minus P1 to the E1 plus 1 over 1 minus P1 all the way through to 1 minus PK to the EK plus 1 over 1 minus PK. So it's a matter of which one you prefer to use. If you have a lot of terms like this here, then it's better to use this summation. But if you have just a few, then you don't need to use a summation. This is more complicated in that case. So before we end, let's do an example. Let's say we have n is equal to 12. And that means that 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3. Now the divisors, the sum of the divisors is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 12 
and that is equal to 28. And if you check, sigma n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2 square times 1 plus 3, which is equal to 7 times 4, and that's also equal to 28. So it does work out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.